comes from whole. To be holy is just to be complete. To be in alignment with that mysterious force from where everything emanates. All ideas of reverence, love, devotion accepting the authority of something, the supremacy of something, the absoluteness of something comes from the basic idea that there is something bigger than all of us. There is something grander than what human beings can create. It is impossible for us to surpass the beauty, the elegance, the creative abilities of that thing. It is a reality. It is not a matter of speculation. Anybody who has gone deeper into the inquiry of life, nature of reality, have found this thing. Hence, they've spoken about it in many different ways. Now, by the very nature of how we use words, it is impossible not to personify this entity. It does not possess any of the qualities we are attributing to it. And yet, we cannot recognize it without these qualities. The moment we recognize it for certain things, oh, it is a blissful place, a place of no suffering, a place of total freedom, total openness, these are the desires of the limited mind-body phenomenon we have become. So in relationship to what we are, all the best of qualities, best of things can be attributed to that. Although that thing by itself is completely unaware of any of these qualities. It simply is. It is too pure to be thinking about what it is. Even to do that, you need a little bit of uncertainty, a little bit of fear, a little bit of doubt. There has to be at least one layer of clouding for you to reflect on your magnificence. If you are the only thing there is, and if you are so pure, so complete, there is no necessity to recognize that completeness. Not to say that it is not aware of itself. It's, it's very nature of consciousness to be conscious of itself. When it is not conscious of itself, that is where attachment to something else happens. It is conscious of something. If you have to use a more personal language, this is how you are. You can be just alive without doing anything, without thinking about anything. It is your very nature. But when you get attached to a thought, an idea, your consciousness accepts that fully and begins to reflect that. Now that is who you are and that is what you identify with. Now it is natural that when an awakened individual describes that place, 
to describe it as something transcendental, something superior, something absolute. That is where we get the language religions use. There is one God, the Supreme One, the Lord, who watches everything because it is the nature of consciousness. Of course, it watches everything. But when you say that it watches everything, the way you are interpreting, it is completely different. It is not sitting and watching what you are doing. It is least bit bothered about your individual experiences. It is watchful of its own nature. This is where we get all these ideas from. You make that entity into an extension of your imagination. At a certain level, all these are true. It is watching. All your actions are being judged, but in a totally different way. Not in the way we imagine them to be. All your actions, because they are performed outside of communion with the self, you eventually have to complete those actions. You eventually have to figure out a way to disentangle yourself from those actions, detach yourself from those actions, because your true nature is to be one with the self. In that sense, all your actions are being judged, not based on what you're doing, but mostly on how you're doing the action. Are you performing your action with the awareness of the self? Are you being mindful? Are you in the present moment or are you lost in a world of thoughts and ideas? It is more existential. The judgment is not to punish. It is to set things right. Because that thing knows that the ultimate place of peace, security and certainty is the center of your being. The farther you go from the center, the more agitated and disturbed you become. It knows that. That is why it is constantly judging all your actions that do not lead to the center. An action performed without awareness does not lead to the center. It takes you outward. This is the only judgment. Now, this is the idea of karma. Karma is not right and wrong. It is not a moral judgment. It is about how connected you are to the now, which is where the self is. The consciousness does not judge you based on right and wrong. You could be a butcher and you can perform your actions with such awareness, such connectedness to the present moment that your action could actually be liberating you. On the other hand, you could be a priest using all rosy, holy words dressed to the occasion, but you know nothing about mindfulness. Your life is not meditative. It is just noisy and chaotic. Now there, the judgment is clear. At the moment of death, this man who has been performing his action with awareness, irrespective of what he's been doing, he will be judged 
because ultimately you belong to that realm. So your judgment is in terms of how close you are to becoming a part of that realm. It is not someone's conscious judgment. It's an existential sifting and clearing things out. If you have stayed closer to home, then it's easier to let you in. The door has to be opened and said, why are you standing outside? Come in. But if you have gone so far away, completely oblivious to the present moment, you have built, built a world for yourself in your imagination and you're stuck there, then you will not even be able to hear the voice that is saying, come home, the door is open. That is where you experience this distinct separation between one action and other as judgment. I am being punished. I am being tortured. Nobody is punishing you. Nobody is torturing you. There is no hellfire. You have created your own hell. What's the difference between heaven and hell? Heaven is a place. Hell is your mind. If you can just be in that certain space without the tormenting mind to keep on reminding you of what you recognize as hell, then you are in heaven. Each moment, you can either be in heaven or be in hell. There's no in-between. When you are in the present moment, you are in heaven. When you're not in the present moment, you are in hell. You could have gotten used to living in hell and you could have accepted it as something normal. But still, you know the disturbance is there, the agitation is there, the fear is there. It's just a matter of where you are in that moment. It is not a place of judgment that is somewhere far away. These are our imaginations. So, in the very nature of how we describe that entity, our relationship with that entity, we make it possible for a religious interpretation of surrendering, acceptance, subservience to that something. Now, once the idea is there, it can be filled with anything. Now, this idea has been filled with all kinds of human desires. And it has become a nasty game in the world where always someone is trying to assert their dominance on things. Because this idea is very fundamental that you are that. Without knowing what that is, you will simply assume that you have to be powerful. You have to control things. And the other flip side, if you are unable to get to that place of power and authority artificially in the world, you accept subservience. You just say, oh, maybe I am born to be on this side. You don't long to become the king. You want to be as obedient, as loyal a citizen of that kingdom as possible. Both are ways of blocking your path to the self. One keeps you in a delusional world of supremacy, just 
feeling powerful deep down you know very well that you have not found anything real as long as there are people bowing down to you hailing you as the king you accept that as your authority but the day you lose your throne you see yourself as worthless we can see this in politicians if they lose an election in that moment they fall down in their eyes so low that they cannot even find them it is just that they have figured out a mechanism of dealing with it the pain the anger the frustration the uncertainty of oh i'm not going to be in power i won't get all this my crown is gone i just have to be me a normal person just like everybody else damn it's worse than death for them it is worse than death because they have become attached to something fictitious something imaginary in a same way people are attached to many things that gives them a sense of false security religion is also one such game where both the ones who are preaching and the ones who are accepting the preaching are intoxicated in this false sense of security that they are giving each other both are parasites the priest is feeding on you you are feeding on him by yourself you are empty by himself he is empty in that relationship there is a feeling of completeness but it's not absolute completeness the moment the relationship breaks the arrangement breaks there is that emptiness that you have to deal with this is why it is very hard to convince a religious mind to drop that nonsense because for that mind it is not nonsense it is security safety comfort and many different things the insecurities of the mind turns these beautiful spiritual mystical words into dogmatic beliefs the basic idea is there which has to be understood because that is how you can free yourself from the tormenting mind the basic framework of liberation can only be provided by these mystical scriptures and religious scriptures you will not find it in any other endeavor you will not find this chain of thought in either science or philosophy or any other stream of thinking science is not interested in your liberation the ultimate objective of science is to discover something outside of you so even when it finds it it cannot free you it can only free you from certain things certain activities it can help you on the outside but deep down what you're longing for what you're searching for still remains that is why it does not matter how advanced our scientific mindset is how many different things we have discovered deep down the fearful mind is always religious it has this propensity to become religious a little bit of fear a little bit of doubt a little bit of uncertainty makes it cling 
to anything and everything that can give it support. This is why the idea of an invisible man sitting up in the sky, watching you, judging you, listening to your prayers, once in a while answering them is the most intoxicating of ideas. Once you accept this, it is very difficult to shake it off. Because it is so easy to put all your hopes on this entity. And if you have done this long enough, it becomes your other body. You don't even realize that you are split now. Physically, yeah, you have one body. But in the internal realm, you have one more body that is finding its nourishment somewhere else. So unless you're willing to kill that body, you cannot drop religion. Why is it so difficult even after getting to know that what you have been believing might be wrong? It is not that your faith is not shaken. It is not that you don't doubt. You doubt all the time. But it's not enough to shake you out of this slumber fully because one whole body has been created. You have fallen in love with that entity. You see it as yourself. On the inside, the mind is so powerful that it can create a world of its own more real than the world you're experiencing on the outside without even you knowing it. You simply call them your thoughts, your ideas, your beliefs. But there, it is a complete being. In a way, you can look at it as another ego, an alter ego. 